Farinch Farage versus Ushpest, a cultural, historical, and geopolitical rivalry so big that it needs more police attendance than there are away fans. The football rivalry can be traced back to the 1930s, but the rivalry really sparked between the fans in the 50s, where after the Second World War, Farinch Farage was considered the German team, and Ushpest fans were made up of Hungarians, Jews of Hungary, and considered the Soviet team. Generations on, and that rivalry is as vibrant as ever. As a football fanatic and Englishman, I'd like to say I've seen my fair share of tough rivalries. Let's see how I cope in Budapest. Right, guys, so I'm back at the Airbnb in Budapest right now, and I have seen a football game on locally in Budapest. It is the two biggest teams in Hungary, and I think they're both based in Budapest. It's Ujpest versus, I don't even know how to pronounce the name of the other team. It's the home team, though. Um, so I'm going to go and see whether I can get a ticket to that game. Um, I have to go to the stadium and sign up for a supporter card and then buy a ticket. I know it seems a bit of an ag, doesn't it? But yeah, so this rivalry, I was looking up online and it was like, don't go if you're a tourist. Don't go. It, You know, there's hooligans, there's people that want to get into fights and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm here, my girlfriend's out in Austria at the moment. And I just thought, you know what? I love football. I love a good atmosphere. Why not? Let's go. Hopefully don't get beat up. So just like that, I was on the underground and I was heading to Group Armour Arena. If the stakes weren't high enough as it was, the league table definitely makes that a lot worse because they're both in the top three, they're both in the title race. This game was massive. And when I got off the underground, as you can see here, I was immediately greeted for what was going to be a common theme of the night flares the only thing to do now was to soak up the atmosphere queue up for a ticket and hopefully fingers crossed get one luckily for me i did and i actually was stood in the wrong line i actually was standing in the vip line and ended up getting up a vip ticket for 11,000 hungarian forint which is literally 25 pounds i have no clue where i'm going everything's in hungarian And I tell you guys, there is nothing going to prepare you for where I'm sitting in this game. Like, uh, the experience, I will trade it for nothing. Yeah, somehow I managed to be sat right next to the away fans. And these guys were amazing. They brought the atmosphere. But before we get into the game, I actually just want to show you the pre-match ceremony before this game. Uh, I, I don't even know. The, this guy releases an eagle. The eagle flies onto the pitch. And this poor old fella runs along the pitch after the eagle and then runs off the pitch, back down the pitch, on the other side of the pitch. God, man. Like, even even I'd be, be shattered from that. Like, uh, I, I don't even know. I, uh, is this fair? Is this legal? But anyway, good on your old fella. And for those who are interested, yes, you can actually drink beer and smoke a cigarette in the stands. Like, uh, this, is, this is the Wild West. This is English football in the 80s. Flares, cigarettes, beer, hooliganism. Ah, oh, take me back, Darren. And I can't lie, it was a bit of a shock to me to hear Varenk Farosh be rapping the Will Grigg song. Yeah, interesting choice, lads, but I respect it. And then it was time for the players to walk out. And to be honest, I'm just going to let the atmosphere do the talking. This was amazing. <laughs>
just absolutely crazy atmosphere and then you actually have to sit there and wait for the smog to clear from the flares so that the referee can call kickoff. This actually happens multiple times throughout the game. Throughout the video as well you also see firemen literally sitting at the front of the away crowd so that when they're struggling to put out the flares in the away crowd you'll see them passing it down to the firemen who have a water bucket that they can put it in and then put it out. It, it, it's just it's mind boggling. It's crazy and you know what I love it. And then guys it happened. You see here in this little clip that I'm like focusing in on the other side and then you see the camera kind of like wobble a little bit and it's because I get hit with something and it makes me jump because I'm like what's just been thrown at me by the away fans it was a chewing gum they threw chewing gum at me that was a first that was that was a first for me and tonight it definitely wasn't the last Just like that kickoff and as you can hear and it's a common theme throughout this game the Uj Pest fans are just incredible they're amazing they don't stop they're, they're yeah I have to give it to them they're they're an amazing bunch of fans the first part of the first half though consisted of Farrenk Farosh dominating and Uj Pest looking to hit them on the counter-attack <laughs> There was then this great attempt from Uj Pest's number 33. But then due to a dodgy Uj Pest defender's clearance, Varenk Farosh went 1-0 up. And I'm telling you, this striker, this striker was class. Man, a full-blown fireworks show for a goal. The Hungarians have got it right, man. But the Uspest fans weren't giving up, and neither were the players. Csobot lő, lepattan ez is, újabb lövés, Varga! Ujevic, jó továbbítás, Csobot, Varga véd nagyot! I have to say with my view of this when I was watching this live and this was directly in front of me, this looked like a pen to me. And uh, the Uj Pest fans went mental and I don't really blame them. Yeah, despite Uj Pest having their chances to equalise, they just couldn't score. No matter what they did, they just couldn't get the ball in the net. And before you knew it, it was half-time and it was 1-0 to Farenk Farosh. Half-time entertainment, anyone? It's so funny with these kiss cams, man. You can tell the people that are, like, related when they, <laughs> when they put the camera on them because they're like, uh, no. I'm not kissing my dad or brother or cousin. It happened a good few times when they were panning this camera about. Second half underway and it started off much of the same. Ujpest were just all over Farrenk Farosh. And then out of nowhere, Farrenk Farosh just steals it. They just grab a goal from a corner. And yeah, it makes it 2-0. And from this, I probably experienced what is the best atmosphere I've ever been to at a football game within the next, you know, five minutes or so. It was just crazy. So I'm just going to let you guys just watch it, soak it in, just like I did. Oh, baby, the 
This was the aftermath of all of those flares and you know I'm not a smoker but that night I may as well have been as I probably inhaled the equivalent of five packs of cigarettes. So you can see that the Farrakh Farosh fans they're starting to love it whereas the Oujpes fans to the right of me I'm telling you guys the atmosphere it was like a I don't even know it was like a black hole that was in the corner of the stadium it was just <laughs> the, you could feel the anger coming from that corner of the stadium that's the reason why I don't really film them towards the end I didn't really want to get into a situation where uh, someone was like right I'm gonna get that guy with that fucking camera and their mood was only made worse by a third Farrakh Farage goal. This guy in front of me clearly didn't care for his own safety. I got a little clip here of them uh, clearly getting angry at someone from the staff from Farrakh Farah. There was someone down there that they were really angry about and yeah, they were really kicking off at someone down there. <laughs> And just like that, the game was over. It was full time and Farrank Farosh had won the eternal derby in Hungary. I would say that the scoreline was a little bit unfair on Uj Pest. I feel like they could have had two or three goals really. But that's football eh? and sometimes that's the way it goes. I did feel quite empathetic for them because they did have to go over to the Ujpest fans who, you know, they weren't the happiest bunch at that time, losing 3-0 to their greatest rivals, which put them top and put them third. Let's just say I wouldn't want to be an Ujpest player right now. <laughs> I survived, I got home safely, I walked the whole way because all the metro stations were just packed at the time and I was just like, oh, I just want my freedom, I just want to walk home. Plus it gave me a nice last walk through Budapest because as of this morning, as it is in the morning now, um, we are going on a train to Graz. So if you want to see the travel vlog, you can go and find that on my YouTube channel. Alex getting ready, there she goes. We've been exploring Budapest. Um, but yeah, yesterday was just absolutely insane. The atmosphere was nothing like I'd ever experienced. And as Alex would probably confirm, I have been watching the videos of the away fans over and over again, because they were absolutely insane. Like the crowds were just incredible. Nothing like what I've experienced in England kind of good kind of bad because there was sometimes I feared for my life I was getting getting things thrown at me getting things uh 
uh, when they take off the flares, there's like a safety plastic thing I think that they take off and they were they were like popping them at us <laughs> when they'd done it. Chewing gum being thrown, thing that could fit through the net basically they were chucking. But yeah, it was great fun. I had, I had a great time and it's something that I'd do again. Maybe maybe I'd do football travel vlogs in the future. The total cost of like that game was um, I accidentally got a VIP ticket and uh, because it was all in Hungarian I didn't understand what it meant and I went to the ticket office and the woman spoke like broken English and she was like the only ones that are left pretty much is this one and this one and I picked the cheapest out of the two um, and I didn't realise apparently I was in like the VIP queue there's like two lanes and then there's another lane and one of the lanes didn't have anyone in. I was waiting in it for ages, but nobody nobody was coming there. So I was like, all right, this lane's empty. I'll just go into this lane. So I ended up in the VIP bit. Uh, the beers were three pounds. Um, I then got, I then didn't like the beer. I think the beer, the brand was Deha, Deha. Um, and then I got a Pepsi and a hot dog, which came to cheaper than that. <laughs> Um, it was like two pound seventy or something like that. Um, yeah, Chelsea, eat your heart out because you know I used to be a Chelsea Chelsea season ticket holder, and you would not get food and a beer at a price like that. It's ridiculous. Even the Pepsi, the Pepsi would take you back five. Quid. Another thing that shocked me as well was the pure amount of police there. There was just a, there, I reckon it was a ratio of one to one, one like a supporter to an away supporter to police ratio it was just crazy crazy there must have been like a few thousand police there because it was at every single train stop every like the, you, I took a video of like the line going down at the stadium there was just so many but anyway I hope you enjoyed the uh, football travel vlogs if you liked my outlook on it and liked my perspective give me a like subscribe let me know that uh, you want to see more of it. And yeah, see you later.